This is a full kit, or nearly a full kit of camping. You really don't need anything else to start camping than this. Let's shed the dead weight, and let's cut the cost of camping right down to the bare bones, what you need. $500 Walmart camping challenge. That's what we're talking about right here. Joe Robinette did this video. I talked to him, we compared notes. Before he launched this video, he gave me full blessing to do my version of this, and here it is. This is the $500 Walmart camping challenge. Let's see if I can survive camping in Walmart gear, only spending 500 bucks. Let's keep the fun in it, and let's keep the dollars low, because you guys are just starting out. Hey guys. This is the Walmart $500 camping challenge. As you can see, got a lot of stuff, but we're gonna go through this systematically, and I'm gonna tell you how I used to camp versus how I camp now. Let me put this stuff down. That's a lot of stuff. Let's decide if we need all that stuff. Oh wait, there's a couple more. I forgot my tarp, my fire rack, my cheap saw, one more thing, and my lunch. All right, now let's dissect this. Well, I'm sure that scene looks familiar to all you car campers out there, but it doesn't need to be like that, and you don't need to break the bank to go camping. Always important to be comfortable when you camp, hence the camp chair. All right guys, so now you're wondering what the heck's this guy doing? He starts off by doing survival, then he does wilderness living, then he does fishing, catch and cook, then he does living off the land and primitive cooking, then he does friction fire, stone tools, and now I'm sitting on a stupid lawn chair in the forest. You guys, have asked me to make this video. This is the most recommended video on my channel from people who are just jumping in and jumping out right away because you guys have no clue where to start. Well, this video is gonna address just that. I'm gonna tell you guys how to get started in camping outdoors and wilderness living, but the best way to do it is through demonstration. So I'm gonna show you my kit from three or four years ago when all I used to do was pleasure camp to now, which is now more in line with wilderness living. So let's dive into some gear. I want to sort it in a column A and a column B, and I'm going to tell you what fits in column A, which is getting started, and then column B, which is expert mode. First, let's get rid of this stupid camping chair. When you go camping, you don't need a camp chair. Sit on a stupid log. You pay premium for sitting on logs when you go camping. Not sitting in a chair. That's a lot of gear. And we used to carry that much gear. If you don't believe me, you got to check back at some of my older videos. We used to fill the canoe, on a golf cart and we used to carry it all back full of gear. Now, when I bring my family, there's certain amenities that must be provided. But when I go by myself, I could do bare bones. Bare bones it is. Bare bones makes things fun. Okay, let's, that's a tent. That's an old tent. That's an old tent, that's a big tent. Okay, we got on stuff. Here's the new tent. We got on stuff all these bags. This is, well, that goes in column middle because we use that for old and new. This is definitely an old camp pad. Old camp pad goes on the column A. Okay, fire rack, yes, this is definitely column A. Newspaper, column A. Hmm, what's this? Lunch and a cooler, column A. I'm decided, yeah, I use, I'm gonna put this in column B, even though it could fit in column A. Old style, cheap blue tarp, column A. Bow saw, cheap bow saw, Walmart brand. Actually, this is probably Canadian Tire, but Canadian Tire is our brand of Walmart. Column A, of course, wanna know why? Because it doesn't fold down. I used to use a pillow from home camping, and you can too, it's a cheap alternative. Definitely column A, but not for its weight, for its bulk. New camp pad. That's definitely a thermal rest, very lightweight, very small, very compact, column B. Now let's dissect this in a little bit more detail and show you why I chose each item. We can start with the key ones. Let's start with the big ones, you know, the big cost items. Let's go with the tent first. I was just in Texas and I could find a tent for 20 bucks. Would I buy a $20 tent? Yeah, I probably would if I was starting out. I'd buy the first $20 tent I saw. I'd probably deal with a little bit of leaks. I'd go home, I'd learn something. 
And uh, would I have wasted 20 bucks? I don't know. Because I spent several hundred dollars on this marmot tent and I'm not completely satisfied with it. It does a good job, but it's got its flaws. If I had to spend 20 bucks on it, I'd be pretty darn happy. But you can get tents for $800, 1,000, 1,500. I mean, open your wallet. You can dig as deep as you want on a tent. So this is actually the tent I used to use. It's a Coleman brand tent. Uh, I bought it for probably a hundred bucks. And my thinking was probably how you think is bigger is better. And within with certain reason, bigger is better. I mean, a three man tent here, does it fit three men? It doesn't fit three men. It fits uh, two men intimately, you know, if you're on the down low. Uh, we fit my wife and I uh, and our son until he's, you know, five or six years old and that's it. So this is a two man tent. It's a really good solo tent, which is actually why I bought it. It's the Marmot Tungsten 3P. It's not a 3P. This is a uh, five, let's see. They call it a five man tent. Uh, five person tent here. It's gigantic. I can't put this in my backpack. I can't even, you know, you know, it's, you can't lug it anywhere. It, the reason we got the small tent is because we wanted to go a little bit further distances. So I'm actually gonna set these tents up and I wanna show you the difference between the two and show you why you wanna be very careful about what you decide on the tent. But you should definitely get a cheap tent. Start off, get the $100 tent. Um, make sure it's not too big, not too small and uh, go from there. All right, let's roll these guys out and show you the difference between the two. Don't you dare think of clicking away because I'm doing this for you. I wanna show you how to get started with camping. Okay, now that we got the poles in there, we get to make it erect. That's my favorite part, making the tent erect. Always zip up your tent. You're gonna get mosquitoes in there right away. All right, so here's the 5P, the so-called 5P Coleman brand cheap tent. 100, 125 bucks, I don't know, something like that. There's the bag it comes in, it's big. I don't know, you probably can't get the perspective, but let's back up. You're here, you're about at least 10 feet wide. Let's go have a look inside. This tent is massive, it's massive. And it's about a third or a quarter of the price of my small tent. So when you're buying a tent, if you're buying a small ultralight tent or in the ultralight realm of tents, what you're paying for is compactness. So that's the first thing you have to know about tents. When you're paying more money for a tent, you're not necessarily paying for a bigger tent, more elaborate tent. You may be paying for a better constructed tent, one that will have more durability, better zippers, better buckles, but you're definitely not paying for size. And I would advise you to not go after a giant tent. Unless you're car camping, if you want to get anywhere off the beaten path, go for a smaller tent. But you can still get a cheap tent. I mean, this tent's lasted me five or six years now. The tent before that lasted me about seven or eight. I could have actually kept using that tent, but the I'd use it so much that the rain fly on it, being exposed in the sun so, many, so much, had disintegrated, and so it was tearing. All I would have to do is replace the fly, but it's pretty tricky to replace a fly to find the right size, and dimensions to make it work properly. Okay, so I wanna show you how big this is. Let's see how many people we can really fit in it. This is advertised as a five-man tent. So I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna be at the one edge. That's one man, two man, three man-ish, four man-ish. So they're a little shy on their measurements of a five-man tent, but I could probably fit five men in here. I wouldn't want to, but you probably could. Now let's go set up the small tent. So first thing you're gonna notice about the Marmot Tungsten is that it's not a super ultralight tent. And for good reason. I looked at the ultralight tents. I didn't wanna spend an extra 200 bucks just to get two pounds less. On average, what you're looking for when I did my research was you're looking about a pound or two per person. So if this is a three man tent, six pounds is on the heavy side. If you can go a pound and a half or a pound, you're getting into the ultralight range, but you're gonna pay the price for this. The other tent, I think I weighed on the scale was about 15 pounds. Now there's a big difference, that's 11 pounds. When you start to put that in a backpack and you start thinking, I'm gonna get in the backcountry, 11 pounds of extra weight for a tent, 
No, it's not gonna happen, but six pound is, is doable. All you do is break the tent up into its parts, you split it among the number of people you're gonna have. In this case, two people, I wouldn't put three people in this tent, and you're good to go. I mean, you could do the same thing with the big tent. If you're a five-man crew, divide the parts up. Each one person grabs the poles, one person grabs the rain fly, one person grabs the tent itself, and you're laughing, right? Split up some of the other gear, and you're good to go. So, it can be done cheaply, is what I'm saying. All right, let's set up my 3P marmot now. There we go. Now it's a simple matter of just clipping it in. Yeah, I know the mosquitoes are getting in the door. I would advise when you go in at night, before you decide you're going to sleep, get your flashlight out and inspect around the outside and kill all those bugs that are in there and then don't open the door again. Bring a pee bottle inside. You don't know what a pee bottle is? A pee bottle is something you pee in in the middle of the night so you don't have to get out. There we go. Now you can see that the small tent is dwarfed by the big tent. <laughs> it's like if this was Pac-Man, this guy better run. So thing is, you're paying for lightness, uh, you're paying for portability, um, but you don't have to spend a bunch of money. So if you're just starting out, buy yourself a cheap tent and grow with your equipment. I didn't start off with a bunch of fancy equipment. I used that big mother of a tent probably three years ago. Yeah, because I just did pleasure camping. I didn't go out and do survival stuff. I got bored of lugging that thing around and I decided I want to get a little bit further so I grabbed this tent. It was as simple as that. But you're not going to go way off in the bush when you first start camping. You got to grow with your equipment. And that's a lesson. If you guys stick around with me to the end, I'm going to show you how I used to cook versus how I cook now. So that will be an eye opener for you, I think. I'm in. I'm going to lay down on the edge here. That's one person. That's two persons. And a half a person. Yeah, man, there's no way you could fit three bodies in there. I'm sorry, Marmot. Don't mean to burst your bubble, but you got your measurements wrong. When you guys buy a tent, take the measurements that they give you. They're going to give you the dimensions, the bottom dimensions. Cut it out or mark it out on the floor. And then lay the people that you want to put in the tent on the ground within that dimension. And then assume or presume that you're not going to be water weighed up against the sidewall. Because if you do, you're actually going to get dew all over you. See, if you do, you do. And you don't want do to do. You know what I'm getting at. Once the uh, covering goes on top of the rain covering goes on top, it actually comes out here and there's spots on the outside for your gear. What you do get is another door on the back side so you can actually exit both sides of the tent. That's a plus. That's an engineering addition to why you pay a little bit extra bucks. Uh, simplicity of setting up, the lightness of all the, all the hooks and guides, the zippers, they're all better quality. So there's a trade-off. But when you start off, you do not need an expensive tent. A tent is one of those things that you do not have to buy the most expensive of to get started. You got differences in height. The footprint is, is smaller on this side and on the width too. There's a huge difference on the width. You can see how, how just how big and it's got heavier material in there. Whereas this is all lightweight material. Even the bottom is lightweight. Whereas the other one's a heavy, heavy tarp. This is just a thin a really really thin material not even really waterproof whereas this one you could probably throw in the lake and it would still protect you very heavy plastic but durable all right i want to get something out of the way real quick before we move on to the bedding okay these are my these are my old pants you guys probably seen these in most of the videos i've ever made they're a pair of camel uh cotton pants uh, I would have kept wearing these. In fact, Jeremy kept asking me, are you ready for a new pair of pants? I'm like, ah, I'll probably get another year out of them. He's like, yeah, you're probably right. Kind of an inside joke. But the point is, or the problem is, I guess, is I now have holes in my pants, which I would kind of cover up um, the functionality of it by wearing pajama pants underneath them. Yeah, man. I put pajama pants underneath these to extend the life of them. You can't walk around the forest with pajama pants, or can you? Actually, you can't. Problem is, is insects will bite right through these because they're so thin. And then that was the problem I was having with these is that mosquitoes were getting inside my drawers and they're biting me. And so that's not a functional, per that's not serving its function anymore. So 
Anyway, I've had these pants for probably 10 years. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but it's true. And I've worn them for hunting and fishing and camping, and they've done a, an excellent job. And you know, these are off the shelf, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks, something like that on sale. I forget. Now, of course, I have fancy bushcraft pants. Yes, I went and got the Fall Raven, as everybody else does. I was researching a long time to find alternative to pants. I went into atmosphere, they made really thin material, and then the cut off shorts. I'm like, I don't, I'm not gonna take my pants, my shorts. I'm gonna make shorts. I don't want that. I don't want a zipper on my knee. So, anyway, I, of course, came to the Fall Ravens. They're about 150 bucks. They're selling them at atmosphere now, which is uh, online. You can buy them online, order them. They're like 150 bucks, 180 bucks. I'm gonna definitely get 180, 150 bucks of use out of these pants because I'm gonna use them until they're dead. That's what, just what I do. I use everything till it's completely dead. So anyway, here's my Fall Ravens. I forget what brand they are. They're very well constructed. I'm very happy with them. Pockets everywhere. Uh, they're very durable and they're very comfortable. What else could you want? And they're waterproof and insect proof. So, all right, let's go on to bedding. We gotta keep this moving. Here's our bedding. We kinda got a mix match of column A's and column B's. Let's talk about camp mats first because obviously that's what you're going to be putting on the ground. It's most important. I bought this for 10 bucks at a garage sale. It is now broken. The nozzle here leaks. But the funny thing is, I still have it. And the reason I still have it is because I use it on my balcony. It doesn't hold air, but it's got so much padding and cushioning because it's so bulky to begin with. It still does a good job. And my son can actually use this camping. Although when he moves around, the air squishes in and out, which is pretty annoying. But the point is, you can get yourself probably for 19 bucks at uh, Walmart, a camp pad similar to this. I think the most you might pay is 30 bucks for one of these as compared to my ultralight thermal rest, which is gonna retail for about a hundred bucks. And the smart guy that I am, I actually got a woman's version of it because it was the same height. It was the same height as the small men's, except they charged more for the men's. Talk about equality. Women pay more for haircuts. Yeah, well, men pay more <laughs> for their camp mats. So I got the woman version of it. It's it's the same size, like I said, it's the same functionality. So there's no difference really between these two mats as far as their use and function, none. It's just size. This one is probably twice as bulky. This one here is probably twice as bulky as this one. This fits in a backpack. This takes up the whole backpack. You know what? When I was a teenager, I never used a camp mat. Guys, you're durable enough, you can take it. Your body can literally take it. Throw an extra sleeping bag down on the ground if you don't have anything, or throw a, a sheet or a, a duvet or an extra comforter. You're good to go, man. For my son, he doesn't get a, he doesn't get a camp mat. He doesn't need one, because he doesn't have pressure points like adults do. So that's your camp mats. Thermal rest versus a cheap brand. That's all you gotta do. So when I was in my ultralight phase about two or three years ago, and I really wanted to get back in the back country, what I invested in was this. This is, um, well, this is the covering for the bag. A Sea to Summit, it's a waterproofing bag. I think they retail for like 40 bucks or 50 bucks for this waterproof bag. You know what works good too? A garbage bag. Bring a bunch of garbage bags. Cheapy, 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 double them up. Once they break and rip, replace them. If, they, if they're unusable, throw them in the fire. I paid maybe 100, 200 bucks for this bag. I want to tell you why I don't like it so you can avoid the same mistakes. My wife is on the same page with me. She, I lent it to her because it was a small bag and she needed a small bag. <laughs> that sounds funny. Um, as a change, I guess. So this bag is not good on your skin. It's a plasticky material. It's uh, filled with goose down, uh, so it's warm, which is you know good for zero degrees Celsius. Anyway, so this, free, this bag is good down to freezing which is why I got it, because I wanted a cold weather, small, light, portable bag that was good for all temperatures. But it makes me sweat, so I don't like it. So what I do now, is when it's super cold, I combine it with my old sleeping bag. My old, heavier one that will not fit in a backpack, which prevents me from getting off into the back country. So let's open this up, and I'm gonna tell you why I like this bag, and why I continue to use it. It's probably worth, but oh, there's a secret in here. It's a pillow. Yeah, man, a pillow from from my couch. I just took the covering off of it. I used that as a pillow. Very, very ingenious of me because I'd like to have a pillow and it doesn't weigh a whole lot extra weight. 
Okay, so here is my other bag. It's um, LL Bean. Uh, it's not compact at all, as you can see, <clears throat> but it's super comfortable. It's got a cotton interior. I just love cotton. I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to get away from it. It's not waterproof, um, but it, it'll still function if it's wet, unlike the down, which is advertised if it gets wet, it's completely useless. It contains no loft whatsoever. So what I do is I take this bag, I get inside of it, and then I take the other bag and I throw it on top for loft. That's it. Now I'm good to like minus 20 degrees Celsius. If you do not have a good uh, winter sleeping bag, just use two or three summer sleeping bags. You don't have those, borrow them. Guys, you can borrow stuff. I used to borrow stuff all the time to avoid buying something. And then when I borrowed it too much to the point where the person that I was borrowing it from was irritated, I bought it because you know what? I really wanted it. So what's the difference between a $5 camp tarp and a $100 camp tarp? <laughs> And I was, again, on my ultralight kick and I wanted to spend some money so I get further in the out back. And so what they did was sell me this. I can't speak while I do things, apparently. This, my friends, is what they sold me for 100 bucks. It's the tarp from a tent. Yeah. So they bought replacement tarps tents they stuck them in a bag and they sold them for a hundred bucks so basically it's a more compact version of a big blue tarp for 20 times the price so you can tell me if you think I got the value for my money there it's not a bad color it's not a bright blue tarp that doesn't belong in nature you know this doesn't look nice it looks like a cheap blue tarp but it works and it's something I've used for 10 years 10 years I get my five dollars use out of it when it becomes ratty and old I throw it out it's not a big deal so anyway that's a hundred dollar tarp that's a five dollar tarp anybody can afford a five dollar tarp and you know what I would advise you not to use a tarp just don't use a tarp I in fact never used a tarp until people started using tarps around me I'm like hey that's not a bad idea because sometimes it snows and it rains and it gets wet and I like to be outside but I don't like to be wet and cold but you know what if you're young and you're just starting, get wet and cold. That's why you're out there. That's why you pay the price of admission. Oh, I got my camp chair again. It's such a luxury to have a camp chair. It's got backrest support and all that good stuff. Let's pull up a bit so you guys can see my beautiful mug. Ah, so behind me, I have set up A and B. Shaping up pretty good. We gotta go over cooking next. But I did make a mistake back there. You guys are gonna have to stay tuned to figure out what that mistake is. It's not a big one, it's not that interesting. But stay tuned anyway. Okay, let's do cooking. Should I use the camp chair for the cooking? I feel like I, I feel like I'd kind of sit, sit here and talk about it better. I do like the camp chair. I like the idea of having a camp chair. When I go ice fishing, I bring a camp chair because I don't like sitting in the snow. It's cold in the snow. But having a camp chair gets you above the snow and you're nice and dry and, you know. But, uh, yeah, if you can afford to bring a camp chair, bring a camp chair. If you camp, car camping, I don't care if you bring camp chair or not. Don't bother me. You bring whatever you want. I'm just sharing my expertise as far as camping goes and what I did and do now. I am not you. <clears throat> I don't know that you really want to need a camp chair. And I don't care if you're willing to carry it with you and pay it and mind it. I don't care. Do whatever you want. It's your life, man. Don't let me tell you how to leave it. All right, now we're moving on to cooking. I'll show you my gloves. I still use regular basic $5 work gloves that you can get on sale. And any hardware store, I'm gonna put it down on my knee because I don't want to get my knee wet. Do the expensive or the cheap version? Let's do the expensive version. Everybody loves expensive things, right? So Purcell Trench, when I started researching ultra light gear, Purcell Trench came up a lot. It's an outback camp grill. It's very well constructed. I've always wanted one. It is super, super, super duper light. It comes in a great case that you can tuck away. You don't have to worry about, you know, it's, it's a wonderful design. Um, it's, it's probably worth the money. A uh, hundred bucks is, is about going right retail for the Purcell Trench. I say it's super, super packable, super portable. comes in a nice case, hundred bucks. Okay. Do you need it? No, because I use an alternative for years and years and years and years and years. This is not something I just invented. I've been using it for years and I can recommend it. Let me show you what it is. 
so first thing you should know is it comes in a compact semi ultra light version and no it's not all dinged up and ringed up and messed up because of use it's because I drove it over the car that's right I left my backpack including all my gear and in, in behind my car you guys done it too don't say yeah you stupid guy okay it was the only time I'd made a mistake and did it well, it's the only time I've ever made a mistake in my life okay so anyway I ran it over that's why it's all bent this is the one I've had for probably five or six years I mean look at it it's in perfect working order where does it come from it's an emigrate that's right all you do is saw off here with a hacksaw and then take a file and then file all those sharp edges so that when you put it in your backpack you don't ruin it all right so before we grab our kitchenware let's talk about the differences you got 100 bucks free <laughs> free and they actually sell these grates in the camping store for like 30 bucks this is now column a this is before column b we're getting pretty close now we just need our kitchenware okay so has cooking changed a whole lot for me over the years maybe a little bit so what I would have used before and still use is a big heavy cast iron I do a lot of cooking when I go out I don't mind the weight I can put this on the fire and cook I do a lot of cooking on the woods would I recommend this yeah I think I would recommend a cast iron if you're willing to carry the weight if you're going to go ultra light no don't carry cast iron okay so the cheapest alternative I found for cookware is actually these cheapies you can get these at Walmart for 10 bucks you can see there's no handle on it because the handle melted off because it was made of plastic and it couldn't withstand the heat of the fire and the flame so it broke off but hey guess what now it's more portable <laughs> 10 bucks you can't go wrong 10 bucks I actually bought these cast irons for 20 bucks uh, online yeah 20 bucks because nobody cooks with cast iron anymore so you find some unlucky dude who wants to give up their cast iron even though it's the best thing in the whole world 20 bucks I used to use a, a plastic plate because I used to think you needed a plastic plate now I will just eat right out of this and then of course the MSR brand pots and pans which you see in a lot of my videos oh look at there's a fork <laughs> I have brought a fork because you need a fork if you go in the camping right you need a fork a spoon and a knife no you don't <clears throat> that's just what people think because they grow up in the city you don't need any cutlery just use a stick slurp out of the dish use your hands if it's not too hot cut up a stick okay so the MSR I think a full set of MSR is around 50 bucks uh, so it's a little bit cost prohibitive when you're first starting but the MSR is something I would invest money in it's lightweight it's portable you can take it almost anywhere it's fairly lightweight it's stainless steel so it's good in the fire I would recommend this highly over titanium titanium is light it's overrated in my opinion and while it's super light and it'll get you in the back country it's gonna cost you a lot of money and you're not really gonna to want to put it on the fire although I've heard mixed uh, reviews about putting it in the fire so the MSR is something I would invest some money in 50 bucks I think it gets you a complete set stainless steel jug that's good or uh, get yourself an algae works fine there's no issues with that at one point in time I used to bring all my water in in one of those big blue jugs yeah man before I started boiling my water I just loaded in the car we'd paddle it across the lake we'd have water there and we wouldn't boil any water but now I boil water so the plate and the old junker that will go into the old pile over here that plate's worth I don't know a couple bucks but like I say you don't really need it and let's grab the new MSR pot and the old historically old cast iron which will last your lifetime will go into the new pile the water bottle we use whenever we want so we can either put it over in that pile but let's put it over in this pile because it is an expensive one while we're at it we've got the gloves the gloves we'll put in let's put them in the old pile because what we really want to know is how much it costs to get started oh, I instantly feel old when I sit down in a chair like this but I do feel like I'm car camping all right enough joking it's not funny this is serious this is camping it's a difference between how I used to camp and how I camp now it's very important stuff let's talk about cutting implements because we're getting close to where the point where we need to start eating and I don't think I can end this video without actually eating food it's like a staple 
to my life, eating. I want to show you how I used to eat and how, no, I want to show you how I used to cook versus how I cook now. So this is my old saw. I love this saw. I don't, I don't really love it. I just, it, it, did a, it did a good job for a number of years. It's worth about 20 bucks. You can get them at Walmart. Um, it probably should get a new blade on it. it uh, it's not super sharp anymore. But again, I've used this up until like two years ago, or not even two years ago, about a year ago, where I got a sponsorship from Agawa Canyon. I would not advise you go out and buy this saw, but I would say like if you're just starting out, get the saw. Maybe, maybe you can figure out a way to take the blade off every time you use it. What I would do is actually put a pool noodle on the outside of it, and then of course it would always fall off. So I would, you pool noodle and like maybe some rope or twine to hold it on. You can't really stuff that in a bag very good. Um, but I would just throw it in the bottom of the canoe and be done with it. I never throw it in my bag because it cuts everything, okay? So that's why I don't like this saw, but it's a good saw. It's for 20 bucks. Gonna get you started, okay? Next up, up for that, you can get one of these. Uh, this is a, a Bach, Bacco Laplander. It was one of the ones that was like fairly re well recommended. I hate this saw. I hate this saw too. This was like 20 bucks or something. It's loose. You see the end has got a big wow in it because I'm just too strong for these saws and I overpowered it and I pushed it through wood and then bent it. Um, it's got a very thick blade on it, a very, very thick blade. And I think it made it thick so that it wouldn't bend and look at where we are, it's bent. I like the full power of having a decent quality bow saw. And this one, of course, is like magic. Every time you use it, you got that beautiful sound. The best part about this is lock away. It's a hundred bucks. Um, do I think you should pay a hundred bucks for a bow saw? How much wood are you gonna cut? How much wood does a wood cut chuck? A lot, probably. I, I chuck a lot of wood. So um, to me, it's something I would invest in. Uh, it's nice that the company sponsored me for it. I'll definitely take the sponsorship because it's a saw that I have no hesitation in recommending. So it's a Boreal 21. It's one of the ones that I would say, maybe you wanna invest some money into this at the start. And then you can get some blades every once in a while for 20 bucks. Maybe it's one of those ones you wanna dip in your pocket and get. Because to me, it's like one of those things that's like a sure thing. It's a sure bet. Here's our collection of saws and knives. Let's do the saws first. So to reduce bulk, we went with the Agawa Canyon. That's new. That's a new pile. The old pile, we went with the $20 bow saw and the Baco Laplander. Fire lighting has been an interesting part of the channel, of course. As you know, I've done a lot of stuff with primitive uh, friction fire. This is a bow drill set I use often on the channel. Uh, it's made out of cedar. And the reason I do this is to keep the channel interesting to me. Because I don't find using a lighter interesting. It's not challenging for me. And when I come out in the woods, I want to be challenged. It's what something you should do too. So if you're avoiding going out in the woods because you think it's too much of a challenge, start in your backyard. Keep it simple. When I first started doing fire lighting, I would bring newspaper with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious because I didn't know a thing about kindling. And this is what my dad taught me was bring, he brought newspaper with him. So, and a lighter. And I still use a lighter, although I don't use the ridiculousness of bringing newspaper with me, but you could, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can't start a fire using kindling that you find in the woods, bring newspaper with you. I wholeheartedly support you and your endeavors to get out there, even if it means you need to bring newspaper as tinder. I fully support you. Bring a lighter. I still use a lighter all the time. When I need it to be quick and efficient and on my survival challenge, I use a lighter. This will cost you a buck. Let's go through these in the pile. Friction fire is gonna go over this pile. Okay, the lighter, that's worth a dollar. I'll go over here. And the kindling, that's just gonna go in this pile here. So next up is what I used to use for a knife. I never used to bring a knife. I would bring a steak knife or butter knife sometimes if I needed to butter thing, something. I just, I never had a really good quality knife. If I went fishing, I would bring a fillet knife. So that's, I don't even have one anymore. I was not gonna go buy a fillet knife just to show in this video because that's dumb, it's a waste of money. I don't wanna waste any money. So uh, what I would do is bring a steak knife with me. So if I was going brook trout fishing, I just, I just got them out with a steak knife because why would I buy a knife for that? And I had a fillet knife that was used uh, by my mom on roofing and so the, the blade tip was burnt out on it, but I could still play with it So I used that for years and years and years and years 
It was my dad's old blade that got uh, mixed in with tools and it got used for uh, removing shingles. So it was all broken. I made do with it for years and years and years and years. If you're getting started, you gotta be cheap. You gotta find ways to do it simply. Okay, so what I would recommend is just get a little, um, little jackknife. Um, you know, I've had these as a kid all the time. I don't even know where my kid version was. A little knife there. That, that'll do some work, man. Sharpen that up, it'll do some work. What I use now, of course, is my Trout and Bird. It took me a long time to invest money in my first uh, knife, big knife, Trout and Bird. It is a knife I would obviously recommend. 100 bucks uh, will get you this uh, knife. It's not got no wear on this right now because it's a new knife. I lost my other knife in Texas. The Texas series is coming, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so there, that's what I would use now. It's my Trout and Bird. Oh, uh, and I would also use a stone knife. Because I'm not being ridiculous when I use the stone knives. I'm using the stone knife because using the modern knife is too easy now, so I want to be challenged. Okay? So this part of it's, uh, part of deciding on what equipment you're going to use is getting equipment that's uh, going to make your life easier, you know, the lighter stuff, where you don't want to haul around a bunch of weight and, um, you know, making things more challenging intellectually, which is like using a stone knife versus, say, a modern knife. That's an intellectual challenge that keeps you developing as a person. Whereas at my point in life, I don't really need to carry around 15 pounds of tent. But you should, because you're young and fit. Carry around the 15 pound tent and get your body uh, some exercise, which it desperately needs. All right, let's get on to uh, fire lighting. For knives, we have our fold out jackknife blade there worth a few bucks I don't even know anymore and then we have our beloved Troden bird and we have our stone knife so let's talk about lighting for when it gets dark out so what I used to use is a mag light it's pretty bright though ouch uh, I've tracked deer with this it works really well so that's uh, just a mag light I think they probably have it's a mini mag mini mag light um, it's an actually LED no reason you can't use that it's about 20 bucks, 20 bucks, some batteries. Uh, what I have now is um, through night. This is a through night TH20. It, uh, it does a pretty good job. And then this is the uh, Archer 2A, it's a handheld. Uh, when I need extra light, what I do is I keep this one on my, on my hat. It's obviously got a head strap. And uh, I double up with the Archer. So the Archer I carry in my pocket, and then I blast this on, the, on top of it. I don't know the cost of these, uh, to be honest. Um, they were obviously given to me by the manufacturer as a sponsorship. Okay, so the new stuff is going to be the through night, through night headlamps, and then we're going to take the old mag light and we're going to put it over here. All right, last things last, we got our bags. So a bag can be a big ticket item, or it can be free, or it can be very cheap. Put it that way. So probably interested to know what I'm using now maybe. So this is the Baltoro 75. It's a very expensive, very well constructed bag. It's got a very rigid support system. It's got a very comfortable strap. I can load this to the gills and I'm perfectly comfortable. It's got a nice weight stra uh, strap which distributes the weight to your hips rather than having it on your shoulders all the time. I can cinch that tight. It's got a chest strap. This is a well-constructed bag. I would recommend this bag all day long. Problem is, it weighs 10 pounds to start with. 10 pounds is a heavy bag. I only use this bag when I need to fill it to the gills. If I can avoid filling it to the gills, I do not bring this bag. What I, I use now still is a bag I used to use for uh, my books in high school. This bag is super duper duper old. Some of the zippers don't work anymore. Like for instance, this one is just completely messed up. The other side thankfully still works, so I can put a water jug lopsided on that side. Uh, the front zipper still works, these still work. It's got a, a back pouch over here. Uh, it's got a basic compartment on the inside, no secret pockets, no nothing. The point is, as I still use this bag, and I use this bag because it's light. This is an interesting little character here. This is my lunchbox. Why would I bring myself a lunchbox into the woods? Well, we're gonna have a peek, aren't we? Let's look inside. What's inside the lunchbox? What? Okay, so that's a hamburger and some bread 
And then uh, there's another container here. What's in the container? Uh, ketchup and uh, mustard, it looks like. Well, obviously there's a story behind this, so let's tell it. So what's the story on bringing a cooler to the woods? I used to bring a cooler to the woods. That's right. Probably like a lot of you guys who just log in your beer and your steaks and your egg and your bacon and your milk. Because you know you need milk in your cereal in the morning. Do you? Really? Do you really? Do you need cheese? Do you need all your condiments? Think about it. You're out there roughing it and you're bringing your condiments. Okay, so I did it too. I'm not as above and beyond doing any of that sort of stuff too. So what I would do is I'd take my other mini one, if I could manage to fit in there, put hot dogs and hamburgers, eggs and cheese and all that good stuff, fill it up and uh, you know keep it frozen for about two or three days, fill it up with ice, pack everything, be all set to go. So I've got some actual hamburgers in here and then of course you had to have condiments. Now I'd probably forgo condiments just eat the meat and be done with it because why would I want to bring condiments all the way out there? Then I got to deal with this little container afterwards, bring it home. So I'm going to do that. So I, I, what I would do is I'd take cellophane, I'd squirt uh, my condiments in it, mustard, ketchup, relish, whatever the kids wanted, and that would be my garnishing. And then all you do after that is take the bottom, you tear it out, squeeze it out, and then you throw the leftover wrapping in the fire and you're done with it. And of course you got to bring the container back, you had to lug around this whole case around because it was at that I knew the trip was empty and then you had to where were you gonna put it? You're gonna carry it in your backpack? Does it fit in your backpack? No, it doesn't. You know, now what do I bring? Well, I try to rely on food that I can get in the wild if possible. If I can't, then I'll bring staple items like dried uh, peanuts, uh, dried cereal, rice. Um, you know, before I would bring canned foods in because that's how I thought we did. You know, my that's what my dad did. He brought canned foods in. You can absolutely 100% bring canned foods in um, if you can afford to carry the weight. This is a full kit, or nearly a full kit of camping. You really don't need anything else to start camping than this. If you think I've missed something, you can leave it down in the comments down below. I mean, you don't even need the backpack, really. You just need something to carry it with. So, you've got your tent, you've got your sleeping bag, your backpack, you got your fire lighting equipment. You've got uh, a knife cutting implement. You got a saw for cutting wood. You got a water bottle. You got your cooking implements. That's my stuff now. My old stuff. Okay, let's see. Old stuff. We got my old pants. We got my old sleeping bag. We got a fire grill. We got an old backpack we salvaged and scraped around. We've got our cooking stuff, which is cheap $10, $15 items. And we have our cooler because we just don't even need it. You don't need the cooler, so why do you have it there to begin with? You got your pillow from home. You can use bedding from home too. Get rid of the sleeping bag. You can get started camping for cheap. Okay, so you've got a good rundown on all my gear on how I used to camp versus how I camp now. So now let's do a cooking show. Let's do a cooking show of how I used to cook foods and then we'll talk a little bit about how I would cook now. Maybe I'll demonstrate how I cook now. You guys already know how to cook now. You don't need to see that. Let's just, I'll show you how I used to cook my foods. All right, let's use the Baco Laplander to cut some kindling.
That fire just seems to go up a lot better when you use newspaper, doesn't it? Yeah, that's why we used to bring newspaper to the woods. It goes up, poof. Beauty. And I'm getting hungry too. I'm always getting hungry. It doesn't stop. Every time I go out in the woods, or not go in the woods, I get hungry. It's a common theme in my life to be hungry for food. So the idea is I'm gonna let it burn on that a little bit more. I'm gonna take that big fire rack and then push it on top and then try to cook with that other little saucer type cooker. The uh, nonstick. And then we're gonna eat a burger. In the woods. Because I didn't used to eat wild foods when I came out. At least not often. Unless I caught a fish. But I would never go out and actually prepare wild meals for myself. That came much later. And a lot of you guys are thinking, thinking that you're starting off on God mode. When you go out, you gotta put together wild meals. You don't. Go to the grocery store, bring your meals with you, and prepare them in the woods, as you would ordinarily. You have to learn a few things about the fire and how to control it, and how to get the temperature right. But who cares if you mess it up? If you're not messing things up, you're not learning. You gotta get over that stumbling block of, of trying to be perfect out of the gate and using and having so much fear that you're paralyzed. You know how do you get something done? I'll show you. This is how you get stuff done. One foot in front of the other. big oversized racks that you really don't want to carry around. You can throw them right on the fire. It doesn't matter how gnarly that fire is, you can make it flat enough to support what you're cooking. Alright guys, so I intentionally screwed up the uh, whole cooking process because I wanted to illustrate how I used to do things. I used to screw things up. Uh, just like everybody, when you're learning you screw things up. So, I have some burnt on one side, but well done on the other side. And that's to be expected. The reason was because I didn't wait till the fire burned down to coal to a temperature that I could safely manage. So. The burger kept lighting on fire and burning. It is still ah, mouth-wateringly edible. That's on a piece of toast. We're actually going to double it up with the second one, which is also burnt. And if we're smart, what we're going to do is take the bun and bread and we're going to stick it into the grease. Yum. <laughs>
So you guys are going to wonder why I would intentionally burn my food because you're here to learn and you want to learn how to do things the right way. Well, I'm teaching you how to do things the right way. The right way to learn how to camp is to go out and camp and screw up. Okay, the other stuff I do is years and years of experience culminating in me wanting to refine my techniques to live off the land, to cook primitively. And so, if you notice when you're watching the channel, anybody who's watched the channel long enough knows that I'm screwing up all the time. And I'm learning all the time. I'm constantly refining my technique. And that's what keeps camping and life in general and the outdoors interesting. Because I'm constantly learning. And I hear a lot of people saying, how do I get started? Well, this is how you get started. You go out and you screw up and you screw up and you screw up and you screw up. I never pretended to be perfect at anything. I never will pretend to be perfect. My mouth is watering. I gotta take a bite. Oh man, that's good. Burnt on the outside, cooked well on the inside. I, I did that on a grill that cost me no money with a lighter that cost me a dollar and some newspaper that cost me nothing because it's the free classifieds. These patties cost me a buck each. Maybe two, maybe a buck fifty, I don't know. A couple slices of bread. Condiments, and this is the best burger I've had in a long time. Something about that flame smoke, the smoke from the fire, the brulee is flame fire brulee, man. I also had to earn this burger, I had to do some work for it. I had to make the fire, I cook it all myself. And that adds flavor and seasoning to your food. And I learned that more and more when I started providing more meals for me from the wild, from scratch. How good that food started to taste. And how basic hunger was seasoning. So guys, I encourage you guys to go out. Make yourself a meal on fire. Like I keep reminding you, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you guys for all the stories you're telling me about how you're pushing boundaries. If you guys go out and cook a meal, or you go out and camp, throw 300 bucks or 350 bucks at some some um, gear, and you go out for the first time or second time, or I don't care. Just let me know, because I want to hear your stories. I really do. I am really, I'm really proud of you guys that are out there pushing your boundaries. And I'm up. I'm not just bullshitting you. I am legitimately proud. Um, when I read your stories, the, the hair on the back of my spine stand up. I'm just, give me chills to read your stories. And I, I am, I'm legitimately proud that I'm connecting with you guys out there. Some of you, I had the, some of you that don't have good guidance, um, Maybe you don't have fathers around. Maybe your father or your mother is not interested in going out and doing the outdoors things that you are. But I'm really proud of you guys for pushing the boundaries. I hope you will continue to do that. And I hope you will dig in and do the things that you love. Um, you can feel free to subscribe or not. I don't care. I have a whole series in Texas that I'm working on right now. It's 19 episodes. About 19 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. There's gonna be a lot of content. But two and a half months. I'm gonna put two and a half months of content out with an update twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday, for at least two and a half months. These are all pre-filmed. Editing them right now. All right, guys. Cheers. I'm out. I'm gonna finish this burger. I'm gonna pack up. And I'm gonna go see my family.
Tschüss. Now this is the perfect temperature to be cooking on. How do you know? Hold your hand there, count to five. One, two, three, four, five. So the perfect, if you can't hold there any longer, that's the perfect height. So really we're up here still with the amount of heat we have from that fire. One, 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 two, three, four. It's hot all the way to the top. So you could probably get away with cooking on a pan here. That's it. That's all you gotta do in order to cook over the fire. Make a big fire, let it burn down, cook. That's it. So the mistake, the thing that didn't belong in this pile, should have been in the other pile, is this $50 Sea to Summit waterproof casing. It doesn't belong on there. That's 50 bucks. That should be in the other pile. Now I gotta pack everything up, <laughs> bring it back home, unpack it, and put it back where it belongs in my house. I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, if you did, and you know somebody who's interested in getting started in camping, and you need a little boot in the butt, share this video with them and make my day. Thanks, guys. Anybody want to come in here and help me do a teardown? I set my spy point up here a few days ago. I want to see what's on it. I'm always curious. It's like Christmas Day checking out your uh, trail camera to see if you got any animals on it. And I kind of set it up around my uh, primitive shelter over here. So it's kind of cool to see if there's anything walking by checking it out. Oh, we got one nighttime shot. That's usually a good sign. But it's B. It's not a nighttime shot. Man, let's go back one more. A bird. Huh. It's a little crow. A raccoon. Cool. Oh, that's it. Only a couple intruders. Nothing major yet. So this is what the garden looks like this year. It's gonna be weedy again, as per usual. Things have already germinated. We put a pile of goat manure in there this year, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You can see a lot of the straw hanging around too. So I've got, uh, you know those corn seeds that I wasn't sure if I should eat, grind up, or what? Well, I planted them. So they're in the nice rows right here. I've got a nice big block of them all in here. You can see they're starting to come up. That's of corn right there, and that's right from those seeds. I've done a similar plan as last year. This uh, whole row along this back edge goes the whole length of the garden is all sunflower seeds. In front of them, I love those uh, pumpkins so much, the pie pumpkins. I also put a row right in front of those. So those are just gonna crawl throughout the whole garden. Pretty crazy stuff. And then I've planted, basically I've, I've gone with the Native American theme again. Beans, uh, squash, Pumpkin, sunflowers, that's it. I wanted the biggest expanding ones in this garden here because it's the big garden. And at home, I've done other things, which is also Native American for the most part. Uh, tomatoes, a lot of people don't know tomatoes is part of the Native American garden, some greens. Uh, I also put some additional things in there too that I would like, like carrots and things like that. So yeah, there's tomatoes and uh, a bunch of other things in my home garden. We also got beans there too, just things I didn't want to get and lettuce. So that's just a little quick update on the garden situation. Um, last year I made big videos in the garden. Not that many people were interested in to watch a gardening video. So this year I didn't bother. I just threw the seeds in and we'll see what happens, what kind of harvest I get at the end. And then I'll just be using those uh, food items throughout different videos and whatnot. So um, I'm just headed home now, go see my family. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. A little couple extras at the end there, just to guys let you know what's going on.